When I was younger, I did a lot of stuff alone. I was alone for a lot of my childhood, actually. Uh, I had a sibling, but there is a six-year age gap between us. So by the time I was entering, you know, like middle school, she was already graduating and doing stuff outside the house. And even when she was there, there were a lot of times where I just wanted to to explore my gigantic yard by myself. I had a really, really big yard, tiny house, gigantic yard. And I spent a lot of time out there. And I don't remember ever once when I was younger, one single time, whether I was seven or 17, I don't remember lamenting not having a lot of friends. I don't ever remember lamenting going ice skating alone, watching movies alone. I did do things with friends, just not all that often. <clears throat> None of these things seemed to bother me when I was younger. It's only been as I've gotten older, moved to a different country, that for some fucking reason, I've been so fixated on trying to find friends completely ignoring the fact that most friendships and every single relationship I've ever had in my life found its way to me. I didn't actually go out and pursue these things. Um, they were things that just kind of happened. Um, they introduced themselves to me. And this is very telling of who I am as a person and what my nature is and just how much I've been acting against my nature, and I've been trying to figure out why. I've been trying to figure out why I spent all those years as a kid doing all these things alone. It's just fine. Is it, I feel like the clock starts ticking a little faster as I get older, and, you know, when I'm, however old I am, when I'm on my deathbed, I'll be thinking, oh, God, I really should have made more friends. Oh, man, this would be so much easier. Dying would be so much easier. You know, like, we all die alone. So I don't know what difference having a lot of people standing around my deathbed would make because I'm, I'd be dying. <laughs> like, I wouldn't be thinking about that kind of stuff. So I don't think it's that. Uh, I, I, I think that there are a lot of pressures that go into not being a loner, you know, not being one of those people. I think in Finland, if you're an adult and you're kind of a loner, it's it's just natural. Nobody really makes fun of you. Maybe when you're in, in, in high school or something, there's a big bullying problem here, and I'm pretty sure that's something that kids get bullied about, not having friends. Um, of course, no one is doing anything about this problem, but, you know, maybe more on that later. <laughs> uh but generally speaking, it's it's sort of, um, you know, doing a lot of things on your own is, I think, versus the United States and, and, and the U.S. culture. I think that there is definitely a pretty big difference there, that you're not, there's not nearly as many eyeballs on people who who are proud of being, you know, just, just sort of like solitary, you know, there, there's not a stigma you're not it's it's not assumed that you're an asshole with a bunch of different personality flaws and issues that make it impossible for you to make friends um the bottom line seems to be that that's just how you live your life that's how you live your life now as cultures everywhere in europe start to diminish and take gigantic shits all in the favor of right-wing nationalism that sentiment may very well change, but for right now, it seems to be a sentiment. Why is my camera moving? It seems to be something that 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 that's not so um, not so frowned upon. So, if I'm going to be anywhere in this world, and I'm going to come to grips with the fact that I'm a loner anywhere in this world, Finland might be might be probably one of the best places. I think. Because th there's no hope of me getting my own private island ever in my life, ever. And I've always told myself, if I ever become a billionaire, I'm going to donate most of the money to something. And the rest of it, I'm going to buy my own private island away from everybody, away from everything. And I know logistically that's absolutely impossible. But it's something, it's also very telling that that is kind of 
been like my mentality, all these what if scenarios that I go through. A lot of them involve me, myself and I. And as I've gotten older, the pressures of not having very many friends have started to get to me. There are people I talk to online. There are quite a few people I talk to online that I do consider friends. And I don't take them for granted. And I view them as close to me as I would somebody sitting right here next to me. But we live in a world where you're always on a clock. You're on a clock and that clock is ticking. And if you don't do something before that clock strikes zero, you're going to regret it. Or it's it's going to be the worst thing in the world. You know, we got this, this fear of missing out bull crap. Uh, we've got this 24-hour news cycle sort of... We, 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 we've got so many people telling us that this is the way things should be done. You should do things this way because I read a study. You should do things this way because I heard. You should do things this way because it's the way that I did them and I turned out okay. You know, there are so many norms thrust upon you. And as somebody on the spectrum, I don't do well with norms. Social norms, social customs, the things that everyone gets excited about, the things that everybody does out of respect, I find completely illogical. And I don't do them no matter how much people seem to hate the fact that I don't do them. And sometimes, yeah, maybe that has made it a little hard to find friends, especially across different cultures. Cultures I respect. Norms, things that other human beings say that all of us should do, I have no respect for those. We're all individuals. We all have different brains and we work in different ways. Your, 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 your cultural norms and things like that, that's, that's, you know, that's part of your culture, whatever, fine. But when you start saying that there's something that I need to be doing socially in order to be accepted socially, you can kiss my ass. And, I, and I'm, I'm just fine looking, um, you know, being on the outside, looking into your little circus that you call a society. Um, I have been working against my nature, I think, for these past five or so months living in this new city. I told myself, I'm going to go out and find friends. I'm going to be social. I'm going to I'm going to really try this time. I'm really and I really 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 did. I gave it the old 1 2 college combo and uh I've just found a lot of misery. I found a lot of wasted effort. I found a lot of empty conversations that went nowhere. I found myself in the same positions that have made me feel okay with being alone when I was younger. As an adult, I found myself in those situations and I've been able to identify with times where I'm sitting there listening to somebody talk about American Idol or or sing somebody else's music show number 50,000 or some reality show or just 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 idle chit-chat about something where I can sense that this person thinks I'm bored, and I don't want them to think I'm bored. I would rather just not be here at all, you know? So I've got to fill the air with with awkward mumblings and, and, and affirmations and, you know, just, just like just filling the air. I don't like to just fill the air. You know, the, the, the people I have met here who I can stomach and the people who have been able to stomach me are the ones who value silence, who 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 value not maybe not always hanging out in really loud places like bars, for example. Everybody wants to hang out at like, and th- that's something else I need to fit in here. Um, another way that I've been going against my nature is I've been putting myself in situations that I otherwise would never ever ever situations I would never undertake alone, like going to a bar. I would never in a million years go to a bar alone, but this group of friends, they wanted to meet at the bar. Okay, I'll put myself out there. Look what putting myself out there got me. A migraine fucking headache. (laughs) You know, Um, like so many drunks, so many people who just want to drink. Like this is what they do on their downtime. They, 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 you know, they want to drink. I don't. But everybody wanted to meet at the fucking bar. And the few people that I did hang out with more than once, we met at like a cafe or something. Or we just took a walk. So it wasn't all bad news. But in the end, what I've discovered is that I am a loner. 
I feel more comfortable just keeping to myself. And any effort that I have expended thus far to try to find friends, especially in a culture where it's this impossible, this seemingly impossible to make friends, like, like you know, I have no problem with Finns and I, they're, they're reserved, kind of closed off ways. It, it, it suits them. It, it suits them very well. And that's, that's cool. Um, and I've accepted this, that it's going to be 10 times harder to make friends because this is going to be 10 times harder to make friends because you're an adult. It's going to be 10 times harder to make friends because English is your first language and Finnish is their first language. But this, the, the, there's this this icy box around a lot of people that they carry with them as they walk around, and it's very hard to pierce that, even with dating sites. And I've been using some of these dating sites like, like, like Tinder, and that, like, I've only been using it for like a month, month and a half, and just some of the most shallow, idiotic, meaningless interaction that I've ever had with people in my entire life has been through Tinder, has been through the Facebook dating app, just... It's not worth it. It's not worth the effort anymore. It's not worth feeling uncomfortable. And it's not worth denying who I really am. It's not worth constantly working against my nature just so I can fulfill what society, what adults and authority figures, what people at some other point long ago in my life told me, you need to do these things. You you, you have to find friends. You're going to end up like this person who... They only perceive to be a loser because they're alone, not because it's what they like, but oh, they're just a loser or there's some kind of personality flaw or defect. And I'm also kind of making this video because I, I, I sense that there are a lot of people, I always say a lot, maybe there's not a lot, maybe it's just a few, maybe it's just a, a sous-son of people, who knows. I, I sense that there are people who feel the same way that I do, that they've been told over and over again that there's there's something wrong with um like what they perceive as you closing yourself off from people just because you close yourself off from friendships doesn't mean you close yourself off from society you can still participate in society you can still do meaningful things you can still be healthy you can still be happy there's a difference between Having a social life and being part of society. Being part of society, you can't opt out of, right? By default, you can't opt out of being a part of society. You can still participate within society without necessarily having to be the life of the part. Without even making a single friend along the way. You can still, I promise you, despite what anybody may be telling you, you don't have to make yourself uncomfortable and force yourself into social situations at the behest of somebody else. Don't live for other people. Don't live for what other people want for you. Don't even live for what your mom or your dad want for you. Live for what you feel is right for you. And what I feel is right for me, after five or six months of a just a absolutely painful, miserable experience of trying to find friends and trying to be okay with, with being social, it's like... Do the things that sustain your life. Do the things that make you content. Happiness is a lot to ask for in a world like this. Just try to be, like, you know, if a friendship happens organically, don't get so used to being alone and, and, and so okay with being alone that you start to push them away. Like, oh my god, new person, what do I do? Oh, if... If it, just as if loneliness feels okay or, or being alone feels okay, if being with this person feels okay and they're, they feel like they're the right person for you to talk to and spend time with, don't push them away, you know, let them in. And, you know, I think that people also look down on being a loner for that reason that, oh, when somebody does come along, you're just going to push them away. And I'm saying you don't have to do that necessarily. You can still let people in. You just don't have to be as receptive and open to new people as other people may be. And you certainly don't have to do it for other people because living for other people, that fucking sucks. <laughs> that blows. Don't live for other people. L live for what you feel is best for you.